there is a growing concern about young people's exposure to sexual content through television or other electronic media and about its potential effects on their sexual attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors. American adolescents spend 11 hours per day with some form of mass media. In a typical viewing hour of viewing, they are exposed to an average of 17 instances of sexual talk or sexual behavior. Now, sexual behavior is defined as behavior that produces arousal and increases the chance of orgasm. Although sexual content in the media can affect any age group, adolescents may be particularly vulnerable. Adolescents may be exposed to sexual content in the media during a developmental period when gender roles, sexual attitudes, and sexual behaviors are being shaped. This group may be particularly at risk because the cognitive skills that allow them to critically analyze messages from the media and to make decisions based on possible future outcomes are not fully developed. Sexual portrayals in the media have become much more explicit. References to safer sex both for STDs, which are sexually transmitted diseases prevention and pregnancy prevention, are rare. Communication theorists believe that the media can have three types of influence. Cultivation, agenda setting, and social learning. Cultivation refers to the notion that people begin to think that what they see on television and in other media really represents the mainstream of what happens in our culture. For example, college students who watch the soaps are more likely than non-viewing students to overestimate the incidence of divorce. And same thing goes for the reality shows that so many adolescents are viewing. Agenda setting is another influence on sexual behavior. News reporters select what to report and what to ignore. And within the stories they report, what to emphasize. The media in many ways tell us what the agenda is and what to pay attention to. Now, in social learning, characters on television, in the movies, or in romantic novels may serve as models whom we imitate, perhaps without even realizing it. I've got a whole video lecture on social learning theory and Bandora's Bobo doll experiment. Please view it for a more detailed explanation on social learning. Now, according to Dr. Ingrid Guber from the Department of Psychiatry and Biobehavioral Sciences and Dr. Joel Gerb from the Prevention Research Center, they state that although research lags behind technology, resources are available that support interventions by medical professionals, also parents and others. Physicians should address pre-adolescent and adolescent patients' use of electronic media and the internet, also television viewing patterns, and viewing of R or X-rated movies or videos when taking a thorough medical history to assess for risk behavior and as a mechanism for discussing sexual knowledge and plans. Now let's recap. 
Adolescents are exposed to many sexual images and messages on television that are almost universally presented in a positive light with little discussion of potential risks and adverse consequences. Adolescents use the media as sources of information about sex, drugs, AIDS, and violence, as well as to learn how to behave in relationships. Research indicates that adolescent sexuality is associated with media use, but the direction of the relationship is not clear. Practitioners should address pre-adolescent and adolescent patients with the use of electronic media and the internet. Parents and guardians should be encouraged to supervise adolescents' media use, to take advantage of the quote-unquote V-chip and screening software to reduce inappropriate access, and help teenagers to critique what they see in the media. Parents should make great use of the parental control options on the cell phones and on television. Oh,